Hey everybody, how's it going out there? I hope you're all staying warm here in Northern Illinois. Winter has arrived. Last week we got dumped on with a whole bunch of snow and the temperatures plummeted and we are in the cold zone. So where are we today? We are up in the studio where we are going to talk about, yep, houseplants again. Today specifically I want to talk about House plants that are non-toxic, that are safe for your dogs and your cats. I'm going to talk about three specific ones that I think are really super easy to grow. So if you're a beginner, these would be the three that I would recommend you start with. So let's get going and talk about them. The first one I'm going to talk about is a parlor palm. And so this see, is just a little six inch palm. These can actually grow up to eight feet high. Typically, you're going to see them probably more around four feet high, but the bigger they get, the more expensive they get. So if you want to get one, I would actually recommend starting with either a four or a six inch. They're decent growers. I wouldn't call them super fast, but they're not super slow either. They have a nice bushy appearance and a tropical look to them, so I really like them. And if cats are batting at them or messing around with them, they're non-toxic, so it's a great thing. Now, the one thing with your palms is these want good indirect light. Most palms want that. They don't want to sit in bright sunlight because it will scorch and you'll get little scorching on the tips of your leaves. So you want to make sure that you don't put them in a south or a west window. Or if you're going to use the light from those windows, you set them away from the window. Watering requirements, well, basically when the top is, you stick your finger on there and the top is dry, that's when you want to water them. Now, what's nice about a palm is you can either bottom water it or you can top water it. But the one thing they don't want to do, they don't want to sit in water. So what I recommend you do is do a pebble tray. I like to use fish gravel because it's cheap, it's pretty, and it's easy to find. And so what I'll do is I'll get one of those clear plastic trays or if you're planting in a pot that has a matching saucer to it, which sometimes that's hard to find, uh, I'll put a layer of the gravel in there and then I'll water from the bottom. It doesn't want to sit in the water though. And the best way to bottom water actually is pour some water in there, wait about 10 minutes and see if it pulls all the water up in it. If you have to add more water, add a little bit more to that tray, let it sit another 20 minutes, go back, dump the excess water off and that's a good way to bottom uh, water. But you know what? That takes 30 minutes of your time. So let's say you don't have that kind of time. Just water it from the top, let it drain out the bottom, throw the extra water away. So again, just stick your finger on there. If the soil is dry, it needs water. And they are pretty good drinkers. So I would be checking smaller pots like every three days, bigger pots at least once a week. The other thing you want to do is when you go to the store to buy a plant is a lot of times, you know, the plants are in their nursery pots and they're just these black pots or sometimes they're tan. Most of them have drainage and most of them have been planted in the right medium. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this plant up out of the pot and I'm going to look at the root system to see if I need to repot it. Now, most plants want to be repotted in the spring or the fall, but if you buy a plant from the store this winter and it's really, really root bound, go ahead and get it repotted up. So I'm going to look at this one and it's not crazy root bound. It's got a lot of room still left in there. I've still got some nice healthy roots in there. So this one's doing pretty good and it can probably wait until spring for me to be able to pot it up. Now you can leave it in this nursery pot, but it's not very pretty. So you can either drop it down inside of another pot, which we call pot covers or a, ca a cash pot, or you can repot it up into a prettier pot. But right now I would keep it in the same size pot that it's already in. And then when I'm ready to pot it up, only go one size pot larger. So if this is a six inch, I'm gonna go up to an eight inch. They don't like to be potted up into great big pots. I don't know why, they just don't like that. And that's typical of most house plants out there. All right, you want another one that will make your rooms feel like tropical? Check this one out. This one is an Eureka palm or it's a butterfly palm or a dipsis loose ends and so I love these so fun to grow and they're big so if you're looking for a big beautiful palm to bring into the house and make it feel all tropical I would recommend one of these they are so fun to grow so these are ones that want more bright direct light than say some of the other plants that we've talked about in the last couple videos. They really need good bright light. The other thing is they want good drainage. So you wanna make sure you get them in good potting soil that's gonna drain well, and you're gonna make sure you put them in a pot that's big enough for the plant to support they it. Do you like to sit up on a pebble tray? 
The other thing to know about this plant though, it is really sensitive to fluoride in the water. So it's really good to use collected rainwater or distilled water when you go to water these. They do wanna dry out in between waterings and they'll take less water in the winter than they do in the summer. And I like to move mine outside. That's when I get the best growth from them in the summertime. I don't put them in direct sunlight because again, it can scorch the ends of your leaves. But if you can get them in a nice bright area, maybe with some protected dappled shade Oh my gosh, they do fabulous outside and they're great as a big centerpiece if you have a big pot that you want to put annuals around. So I'm only talking about three different plants today that I think are easy to grow and that maybe you would like to add to your collection, but there are a lot more plants out there that are non-toxic and safe for your pets. A really good resource to go to is the ASPCA, which is the American Society for Preventing Cruelty to Animals. They have a great list for you to check out on plants that are toxic and plants that are non-toxic for dogs, cats, and horses. So great resource. I'll link that below uh, and you can go check that out. Okay, next we're gonna go over to my house because I have two plants over there. Did I say I was gonna talk about three? Well, I lied. I'm gonna talk about four because I have two more at my house that are absolutely super easy to grow, are pet friendly. I don't have any here at the store. I walked around looking for them and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm out. I better place a plant order. But to finish the video, let's go to my house and we'll check out the two that I have over there. So now we are at the one room in my whole entire house where my house plants actually have a shot of living in the winter. So I bring all of these outside in the summer and they do fabulous out there. This plant here that I've had is a split leaf philodendron. I have had this plant for 32 years. I have almost killed it probably five times. So if I can grow this, you can grow this. I know. Anyways, this guy loves going outside in the summertime and then I bring him in here. And this is one of the rooms that I'm getting ready to convert into an office. And I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I think I'm gonna make it a plant room slash office. Get rid of this piano back here. It was my daughter, she moved to Seattle. She left it here for me. And pianos are crazy heavy and nobody wants you know, to take a piano off your hands. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it. But onward with the video, here we are, number three. This is a bird's nest fern. I love this. Isn't this great? So if I can grow this, you can grow this because this is one of the ones that will want some good, you know, bright light, which this room is cloudy out. I don't have any lights on in here. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. It's pretty bright in here. So it does pretty good. It wants to dry out in between waterings and it wants good drainage. So this is one that will not like sitting in a pot that doesn't have drainage in it. It also likes to be misted. So if you're one of those lovers of the plants and you love to go talk to them and mess around with them, then this is one for you. And your dog, your cat, non-toxic, gotta love it. So there you go. Birds, what's it called? Birds, bird's nest, bird's nest fern. I just like it because it's super easy to grow and I have forgotten to water it and look, Right now, it's really super dry. It needs water. Something fears. You can see it in there. Uh, but he's not dead. He's, he's hanging in there. But I'll give him a little bit of water here when we're done. Another one that you can grow that there's a lot of different varieties is a peperomia. This is the tricolor. It's got like pink on the edge of the leaves here. And this one I had outside on the front porch on those trays that I built that hung down. And I brought it inside this winter. He's doing okay. Um, he also needs a drink. Uh, so I need to give this guy some water too. In fact, I probably need to water everything back here. Uh, it's a good thing your plants can go longer in the winter without water. Uh, they uh, do okay. I have yet to kill anything back here, uh, but I've come close. But this is another one that it likes to be misted. It wants good drainage. It does want uh, like a looser soil when it's planted. And this one likes the pebble tray too because it likes to have that humidity that comes around it. But lots of different pepperonias out there that you can grow. And this is just the one that I happen to have and non-toxic to dogs and cats. Okay, you guys, there you go. There's four for you to try or add to your collection. Or maybe you've been afraid to try plants because you have animals. 
these are four that you can start with. I have listed some other ones below that you can try as well. Feel free to check out my blog. I will also link that down below. It's all about different house plants and you can get a lot of great information there. I am Michelle. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have not subscribed, please do so. Leave your comments, share with your friends, like, and click the notification button so that you know when our videos come out. So everybody keep on gardening. We'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.